Making a life worth living and retirement worth having is really about who comes into our life, comes alongside of us, walks with us, or walks behind us, or walks in front of us to lead us through the path towards a better opportunity in life. You see, it's our career path that really produces for us a living. It's the organization that we're employed by that helps us usually with retirement spending and investing and literally how we put together our life in terms of health care and other things. Let's face it, benefits do something for us as well as a part of our compensation package. And openly, I'm talking about real things here in the audio cast of Magic and Mayhem. But what I'd like to talk to you today is about how literally poverty shows up right in front of you most of the time, and you often miss it. You're so busy literally sending your money and your investments downtown to strangers or bringing them uptown to get some opportunities in a different part of life that you're not really thinking about how to help people right in front of you. You see, most people in life are worried about their income. A lot of people who are in their 40s and 50s are starting to be concerned with retirement and how literally they're going to produce for themselves food, shelter, and other aspects of life that they've become accustomed to, literally, as they begun to age through their careers. Not everyone is an executive level person. Not everyone has made million dollars. And the truth is that the most modest of workers are going to be struggling. We have to really look at our elder care facilities and how they're related to church organizations and whether or not churches are reaching out to those communities and sending in a pastor to preach there to allow people to have good sermons on a regular basis. A rotating schedule that's been put in place by an organization of a bunch of pastors who literally take turns going in month after month. It would only take 12 pastors to literally to stock an organization like that with sermons on God, about the afterlife, and other things that would be pertinent to elderly care in that situation. My own family has been through several of those places and know about the quality of care and the professionalism of the people that literally work there. It's not always up and up, and that's the truth. That only if we're millionaires do we have our entire life taken care of with regard to how we're going to handle our retirement, where we're going to live, what sort of home we're going to stay in, how long we're going to be there, at what point do we go into a facility if health care becomes an issue, and openly, who's going to look after us and change our literal diapers when that occurs? It's a $10 employee, usually maybe a $15 employee, who's in charge of that program, and I've literally seen some of these people eating food off people's plates. I've also seen people lying about people in their family and creating impossible situations so that family members cannot even visit their own parents. You see, we have to really look at the realities of the world. Now, those might be exceptions to the rule, and that's very possible, but it should never be a possibility at all. And that's what I'm saying, that we need to employ people mature enough in these organizations who know how to interact with people without offending them, without insulting them, and without involving literally people outside of a situation at all. But I'm talking about realities. I'm also talking about how do we help the homeless? How do we literally help homeless people who have struggled in life, who have gone through a challenge, who've had someone attack their legal name, who've been cyber hacked and had their money stolen, or literally had someone pretend to be them in their money investments? And what do I mean by that? You see, there is a liaison of sorts who can go into a home if it's rented and literally open your file drawers, look at your bank accounts, look at how you spend your money and produce a credit card just like yours or take your credit card information and literally start shopping at the place you shop, making it look like your expenditures. Not everybody is on top of every single purchase in life. Now, that could just be my opinion or it could be reality that people generally know what kind of money they have because they're paying attention, but they may not be looking at their bank accounts every single second of the day. They might not even be looking at it once a week just to make sure that nobody's doing any shopping that looks like them that's not really them. They may not be even keeping receipts because a lot of places don't even print receipts anymore. Now, and for tax purposes, we usually are supposed to have our receipts, especially for a business owner, but normal folks may be not doing that. We're also getting into a situation with banks where they're literally wanting to take a portion of our income if we go and cash a bank, a, a check at the bank that is producing that check for our company that we don't actually bank at. Now, how is that right? I'm not really sure, but I'm talking about real life, real money situations and real effectiveness. You see, homelessness is not just a downtown thing. It is more openly a situation that is coming from impoverished situations where people don't make enough money, where they're working two and three jobs, they're literally worrying about paying their bills because we have not produced levels enough levels in life is not true that we're not thinking about our organizations should be restructured in a way that some of the most cutting edge companies are. There are literally some cutting edge companies across the land that are saying every employee will make the same amount of money. Now think about that. Even the president is making the same amount of money as the janitor. 
What an amazing structure that is. Think about how a janitor might make me making a really good solid wage so that he is producing a life worth living for his family, but also a retirement worth having for his elder years. Those are the type of companies that I'm certainly looking at working for, and those are the types of companies that we should be starting to produce in the Indiana economy. We have to produce for ourselves a force of people who understand people's rights. And openly, we have a lot of situations where rights are being violated every single day. I literally had someone think that I was just standing in a parking lot looking for something in my car, waiting for them to walk over and tell me something about how my vehicle looked. If it wasn't a compliment, it wasn't the right to say to me, and that's kind of my opinion. I think when you're dealing with strangers, you've got to be as polite as possible unless they're serving you in some capacity. When they're serving you in some sort of role or some sort of responsibility that they have representing another large organization, it is not my responsibility as a consumer to always be perfectly polite. I certainly do try. But when someone is totally missing the entire purpose of their organization is to safeguard money or to make sure a transaction goes smoothly or to make sure that I have certain things handled and covered because I'm paying them to do so, that's another entire thing entirely. Wouldn't you agree? And openly, don't you get concerned when something goes awry on your bank accounts? Now, I'm sort of shifting things around because in reality, it's the money that we build in our lives. It's the debts that we create for ourselves and our families and literally on our children's behalf that really produce for us a life worth living and retirement worth having. You see, if we go into our elder years, especially when we hit about 50 with debts, we're in trouble. If we literally go into our retirement years with debts, what happens to all that debt? Does it pass on to our family members? Does it just get written off by those companies? Or do we literally go into ad hoc after we're dead? I don't really know the laws on that. But openly, most people are looking for making a modest, fair wage that allows them to not only provide shelter for their family, but food on the table and a little extra spending money for a couple important things, such as life insurance policies, such as car insurance, such as literally going out occasionally for dinner and maybe even going to the movies. But we're talking about simple life. There are other people who literally love to travel and they produce a life that allowed them to do that. I know some people who literally own five houses across the land. I think, wow, you're not living in any of them. What are you using them for? But openly, they have the ability to travel throughout their year and they go to each one and check it out. But what happens to them is really interesting. You see, in some states, there are literally people who go in and squat in that house and take it over and literally legally claim that house as if it's been abandoned of some way. Now, we don't exactly have that in the state of Indiana, but we do have people who are opening our locked doors on our vehicles, opening our locked doors on our homes, and literally stealing us blind. I know because that's personally happened to me, and maybe it's happened to you. When it comes to cyber hacking and and identity theft, everybody's all the rage over that. But literally, that can lead to a lot of things. It can lead to a lot of extra debts. It can lead to a lot of extra legal expenses. It can lead to a lot of extra things that deplete our funds that we had planned and earmarked for something else entirely. Now, I'm talking about the truth in life. It can also lead to a horrible situation of homelessness. And when families are dysfunctional, when siblings are in rivalry, when parents are being pulled back and forth amongst them all, it really creates a difficult situation because let's face it, in life, it's typically our family and closest friends that help us in our crises mode. It's those people that we entrust our children to if we have to go somewhere. And it's those step parents, literally, in our lives that we also have to give over our child to because they are now related to that new person in that man or woman's life who we once were married to. Now, openly, I don't have that problem because my family literally moved back home to overseas and that's okay. We created everything lawfully is not the point that openly she's kind of told me off and that's sort of okay in a way. It literally means I had to change my life insurance policy because if she's got a new man, I don't have to produce for her a retirement of any sort and or a modest life insurance policy that might go to her because she was my love interest. But openly, I'm talking about real things. In your life, who helps you if you were to face homelessness? You see, most people don't get that homelessness is two or three paychecks away. They don't realize that a lost job can take six months to a year or longer to find a new one of the same caliber, the same income level, or literally the same proposition of opportunity. Yes, there are bread jobs that really help us. But there are many people who listen to a person saying, look, I'm about to ask you for help. And they literally say, gosh, I've got to go to a meeting right now. Thanks for calling. And they don't realize that there was an entire purpose for that telephone call. I've experienced that plenty going to organizations that say we help homeless people, but usually they're only helping homeless people downtown. I literally just listened to a man talk about a program he had done where people who are homeless could literally stay at the church or on the grounds. And I thought, what a wonderful thing. 
Most churches and organizations have huge lots for parking cars, for camping out possibly, and for activities in the summer. But openly, if there's a homeless person who shows up, what do you literally do with them? Do you drive them all the way downtown where they don't normally live and work and make them go into an environment and a social setting that they can't possibly know how to cope with because they've never dealt with it in their entire life? Only to be found that those shelters are completely full? Everybody pretty much talks about the three main shelters that are literally in Indianapolis. And I hate to tell you this, they're predominantly full. They have very strict programs. I know this from a family member having to experience them long ago because he was wayward and he wouldn't pay attention to the rules. But openly, the men there tough loved on him, and they got him to come back home, and that was good. But in life, we don't have that opportunity for every single person. People need to have a safe place to be. They need to have a safe place to look for jobs. They need to have a safe place to get online without some employee of a barista of some sort interfering with their lawful rights on their own computers. And we most definitely need people who know how to handle the homeless factors of the life that we are leading. Being homeless is not shameful. It happens for a lot of reasons. Rarely in the affluent communities is it totally based on codependency, but sometimes it is. But that's not always the case for every single person that experiences a loss of home, a loss of car, a loss of transportation, a loss of opportunities in life. Sometimes it's some malicious person that's just decided to attack their life and take over the power in that person's life and destroy their life entirely. But what do you do in those cases when those people come to your door? Do you literally say, gosh, you can't solicit me for anything because I have no money to invest in a human being that needs help? Or do you literally say, you know, there's a lot of people here. I can't say who might help you, but I'm willing to open the doors here to let you try to find some help amongst the people who have a heart to help your individual story, your individual situation. We don't literally have to prove that you're perfectly legally acceptable by everyone's standard in this organization. We don't literally have to prove that you follow our ideology. You are a human being, viable and valuable to the entire community at large. You have human rights, and we will not tolerate someone taking away your right to talk to someone. We won't tolerate someone taking away your right to sell something that would give you food for your life. We won't involuntarily submit you to some sort of a health care premise because we think we have the right to do it because that's not our right to take away from you underneath human rights law, which is international around the world. You see, people in our communities don't realize what human rights mean in America. They get what human rights is in a third world country where there's poverty all abound. But what about the poverty right here at home? How are we literally addressing it? Now, I've talked about homelessness in a couple audio casts, and I've tried to give suggestions about what homelessness is really like. But a lot of people, once you mention they're homeless, or once you mention that you're experiencing homelessness, they literally shut you off, cut you off, turn off the call, and don't realize that a question was about to be proposed. The question might have been, listen, do you mind if I could get a can of food? Or literally, could I park on your driveway? Or literally, do you mind if while it's warm, I borrow the hose on your backyard to be able to take a bath and clean myself? I promise I won't get butt naked. I just need to wash my armpits. You see, it's a comical story that I'm telling, but it's not really comical to the people experiencing it. And literally, if you've got people destroying your vehicle, stealing your auto parts through a locked door, through a locked trunk, through all the ways in which people do those things today, it makes it almost impossible to get forward in life. Now, I'm talking about real things, folks. What are you talking about in your life? If you're only talking about the latest television show, the latest game that you're playing, the latest application for your telephone, maybe you're not really engaged in the population that's around the world. You certainly aren't engaged in the people's lives who you are living with, residing with, working with, colleaguing with, or literally networking with at gaming events. You see, everybody's got a life story. And yes, they go to these things for entertainment. They go for stress relief. They go for camaraderie. They go for fun. Absolutely. But late years in life are not fun if we don't produce the relationships we need to move forward in life. There's a lot of people who believe they help people, but when the chips are down for folks, they literally say, sorry, can't help you. We don't literally do that here. Well, why not? Because you've got a policy or because you don't think people in your organization would actually help someone? You see, that's where the rub begins, that no one individual has the right to say that someone else won't be interested in some product, service, or opportunity to help another human being move forward in life. So when you're trying to help people to get out of homelessness, start listening to the stories right in front of you. You don't have to give the person a million dollars. But if you have the ability to 
redirect some buying capital that you might spend on a Starbucks coffee, or forgive me for using that uh, company name, or literally some other place that you might shop for something, and you might decide that I'll redirect, redirect my buying power to literally purchase something that I might like, or I could give as a gift, or I could read and just help that person, then maybe you should do that. Has the Lord led you to do that? Has the Lord led your soul to do something like that, to say, you know what, that $10 might be spent on this thing that I was thinking about, but in spending it here, that $10 might go a lot further in this person's life, and I'll be a hero in a way for that individual. You see, it's the little mini situations that we help that help a person move forward in life. The professionals who help with relocation, the professionals who literally help with all the things that we're longing to do in our life are really people that we're trying to get interested in our opportunity because it's our opportunities in life that move us into a retirement that we love. It's the careers that might stifle us, that might not give us the money that we need after five or six years. And if we don't really look down the road at where that life might go, if we don't really take the risks of talking to people, like one of my friends used to say, they're too afraid to talk to people. No, it's that people have gotten so unreasonable about being willing to listen that makes people fearful of trying to talk to people. You see, so many people miss opportunities in life because they won't listen. So many people miss opportunities to serve others because they won't hear. So many people literally miss an opportunity to help an individual really struggling because their meeting is starting in a couple of minutes and they didn't take the time to say, listen, this is not the best time for us to talk. Let's schedule another time that we can really give you the full time and attention without feeling like I'm pressed for time. You see, that's what a professional person does of a mature age. But I'm just an old man who was schooled by an old father who literally taught me these skills in my training. I also had a sister who was highly professional who taught me a lot about business and other little things, but it still wasn't a Trump education or a Kiyosaki one for that matter, but it literally made me a living for a long time. You see, in life, we have our opportunities and time to help people. And those people are literally standing right in front of us. We might be serving food to people who can pay for it, but someone else might walk in who cannot. Do we recognize that person or do we throw them out because they couldn't afford to pay for it? Or do we say, you know, this particular piece of, of food is just about to expire in our time schedule, but it's probably just fine for someone who's literally hungry. Maybe I'll just hand you that and we'll just call it a day. You see, that's the thing is that we've got fast food restaurants that throw food away because it times out. Nowadays, they make food to order, which helps to reduce uh, the waste of food. And that's wonderful. We have Panera Bread that literally gives food to the homeless and sends it off to large organizations. But what about the man who just walks in off the street and says, I'm homeless, may I have a piece of bread? Do they have a policy that says, absolutely. You don't have to prove to us you're homeless. If you're actually saying this to us and it's real on your face, I'm going to give you a piece of bread. I might even give you a little soup because soup costs me next to nothing to produce. A sandwich might cost more, but, you know, where does the program begin and where does it end, literally? I've been writing to a from some companies that supposedly help this particular area of life, but they're not willing to help unless there's a non-for-profit tax ID number or unless that there's a person literally that's selling some big story. Sometimes it's just one man saying, look, I'd like to eat a little better. The canned food is getting old. And if you're generous enough to just give out one card, it might make the difference in a man's life in terms of his ability to meet people, to network, to go on in life. You see, it's our appointments in these restaurants and establishments where we're breaking bread with others that make and break our career opportunities. You see, Jesus used to literally have a program of let's break bread together. It's called communion in most churches, but you know, communion is also dining with other people. Not necessarily whining them, but literally making time to just partake of food together, eating, talking, and understanding what's going on in someone's life without judging, without severely patronizing them without rebuking them, especially if it's not warranted, but openly. Sometimes it is literally warranted, but other times it's just not kind. And sometimes we might just say, gosh, you know, I know some people that could help you with that situation. And what if we just made a practice in life of saying, gosh, I know someone who could help you with that. Gosh, I literally know someone who might be willing to be open to hearing your story, to deciding on their own, literally whether or not they could help you or not. I might still get a no, but at least I tried to help. 
You see, that's the difference in people's mindsets. There are definitely organizations that say, we will control every single person here. We are not going to give you one email address, not one phone number directly to a person. We're going to make you a call through the main line. We're going to make our receptionist work like mad. And openly, they never get through to anyone who can help. But more importantly, that person acts as a gatekeeper for five to 6,000 people, which literally is not fair to those people. You see, people have the right to decide whether or not they're going to help someone or not. They have the right to hear a different story in life, to know that maybe their own challenges is actually had by someone else in life too. Now, I'm talking about real things. I'm talking about real problems. I'm talking about real situations. I'm talking about real homelessness. I'm saying that practically if you lose your job and you can't find a new one, and the bills keep coming in, and someone hacks your life, and someone steals your money by looking like you in their purchases, and literally you're like, where the heck is all this money going to? Or you're getting stolen from at the gas pump because you're thinking you're filling your tank, but you're actually filling your tank, as well as the guys next to you, who's the friend of the cashier. What do we literally do then? That's theft of gas, which is illegal. That's theft of money, which is also illegal. But who's catching them? I don't know. I can only tell you what I think is going on. I can only render your opinion. Is it paranoia? Absolutely not. Is it observation? Absolutely is. Have I had it happen to me? Absolutely have. And openly, if we've got people getting into our cars and stealing our auto parts, making our cars not function, that destroys our finances too. But I'm talking about real things that happen to real people. What are you talking about? This has been Blake Henson of Magic and Mayhem Podcasting, audio casting, literally, talking to you about real life, authentic story authentic audio with a purpose to say, let's move mountains, people, by just recognizing the people standing literally right in front of us. The ones that are saying, hey, I love you. Hey, can you help me? Hey, let's talk this over. Maybe there's someone you know who can help this situation. That's how we solve hunger. That's how we solve homelessness. That's how we get people jobs. And literally, that's what I'd like to say. It's never usually the person who opens the door that gives the job, it's how that person gets a chance to walk through that door to another person who says, gosh, that's a perfect fit for what we're looking for. You see, you never really know until you talk to someone authentically. The person who's hiring has to talk to the person who is possibly to be hired. But we have to produce relationships that allow us those opportunities. In life, it's our relationships that make life worth living and retirement totally haveable. It's our career that puts money in the bank so that we have one and don't have to work the rest of our lives. Pastors and other people do literally work until they're very old. I'll just be frank about it. But most people don't get that chance. So let's be real, folks. It's time to start looking at our finances. It's time to start looking at our problems. It's time to start looking at people who have challenges and struggles and transitions that they're going through and literally saying, what am I doing if I can do something to help that person move forward in life in love, light, and honor of the Lord in heaven. Thanks for listening. Make it a great day.